Hello friends, welcome to the functions of coating in the edges of uh, polymer process engineering. Um, now let us talk about that what topics we are going to cover in this uh, particular segment. Uh, we will discuss the coating as an insulation and uh, dielectrics, then we will discuss about the electrical properties uh, with the useful concepts. We will have a talk about the resistance and resistivity, then we will discuss about the effect of variables on resistivity. We will talk about uh, the molecularity conductive polymers uh, and uh, then metal field polymers. Uh, we will have a discussion about the capacitance and dielectric constants and dissipation factor and power laws. Now let us talk about the coating as insulation and dielectrics. So organic coatings they serve an important function of uh, uh, providing the electrical insulation and dielectric isolation uh, for electronic components. The effectiveness of coating is in, uh, providing insulation is evaluated through the uh, parameters like uh, insulation resistance, uh, volume resistivity, surface resistivity and dielectric strength. The coating also play a very vital role in strong electrical current and conducting current which are characterized by parameters like dielectric constant, capacitance, dissipation factor and conductivity. So, the understanding uh, the precise electrical values and how they vary with the factors such as uh, composition, purity, structure and environment which is very crucial for selecting reliable coating for electronic equipment. Let us talk about the electrical properties. They refer to the characteristics and behavior of material in uh, relation to, uh, to uh, the flow of electric current or presence of an electric field. When it comes to the natural fiber reinforced composites, their electrical properties can vary depending on several factors like uh, the type of fiber, whatever matrix material being used, the fiber content, the fiber concentration, fiber orientation and processing different uh, type of processing techniques. So, some of uh, the aspects which are related to the electrical properties of these composites like conductivity, the natural fibers such as cotton, hemp, flex all generally poor conductors of electricity. So, when these fibers are used as a reinforcement of uh, uh, composites, they typically do not significantly enhance the electrical conductivity of the resulting material. However, if uh, uh, the composite incorporates uh, conductive fillers uh, or additives uh, such as carbon nanotubes or metal nanoparticles, it may exhibit the improved electrical conductivity. The dielectric constants, the dielectric constants uh, also known as the relative permittivity, it measures uh, the, the materials ability to store the electrical energy uh, in an electric field. So, natural fiber reinforced composites typically have the dielectric constants lower than those of uh, metals or inorganic materials. Now, this property can be advantageous in applications where the low electrical losses and a good insulation properties are required. Then the dielectric strength, the dielectric strength this refers to the ability of a material to withstand the electrical breakdown under an applied voltage. While natural fiber reinforced composites generally have lower dielectric strength compared to metals or ceramics and their dielectric strength can still be sufficient for many applications. Um, it is in important to consider the specific requirement and the voltage level of uh, intended application when selecting the appropriate composite material. Surface resistivity, surface resistivity this measures the resistance uh, of material to flow of uh, electrical current across uh, its surface. Now, natural fiber reinforced composite uh, uh, typically exhibits higher surface resistivity compared to the conductive materials. However, uh, the addition of conductive fillers uh, or coatings can be employed to improve uh, the surface conductivity of uh, the composite if needed. Now, it is crucial to note that the electrical properties of natural fiber reinforced composite can be influenced by various factors like orientation, moisture content, uh, temperature, environmental conditions uh, and uh, the careful consideration and testing of the it is, it is essential to determine the suitability of these composites uh, for a specific electrical application. Now, uh, the insulation resistance uh, is usually determined by the ratio of applied voltage to the total current 
between two electrodes in contact with specific materials and it can be calculated using this particular equation which is uh, R is equal to rho into L over A where R is uh, the insulation resistance in ohms, rho is uh, the specific resistance or resistivity in ohm centimeter, L is the length of the specimen in centimeter and area of a specimen in square centimeter is represented as A. Now, here you see that the, the this is the comparative chart of electrical resistivities of uh, different materials like uh, PTFE, this is possesses the high electrical resistivity, then polystyrene, then diamond, you can say the glass, uh, the silicon, then germanium, iodine, all these things are in, enlisted. Then let us talk about the effect of variables on resistivity, effect of uh, chemical composition. This is a constant characteristics of a material, but it can be affected by various variables. The, the change in the chemical composition or formulation, this can significantly impact the resistivity. Blending a flexibilization resin like uh, polyamides uh, into the epoxy resin, this can cause a rapid decrease in the excellent electrical properties of the epoxy. Now, let us talk about the effect of impurities and the, uh, the effect of variables on resistivity. The minor amount of impurities can also be influenced the resistivity. Now, trace amount of impurities have been utilized in the design of semiconductor devices uh, where addition um, as low as 1 ppb can increase the conductivity by two orders of magnitude. Now, ionic impurities in plastic along with the moisture can significantly lower the resistivity values by 6 to 11 orders of magnitude which can affect the performance of organic insulating coating. The resistivity values, they are dependent on the degree of the curing or the polymerization advancement of the coating raising. Now, as a cure advances, the electrical resistivity generally increases, although there may be a small decrease in the peak exothermic temperature. Now, if we talk about the degree uh, effect of degree of cure, the two competing uh, phenomena are occurring. A decrease in the resistance um, as the temperature rises um, to uh, the reaction exotherm and an increase in the resistance as the resin polymerizes and become fully cured. Now, this uh, exemplified uh, for an amine cured epoxy system as per this figure, this apparent that these curves may also be useful in determining uh, when the resin polymerization is essentially completed. Now, if we talk about the temperature effect, the temperature resistivity relationship, this can be used to determine the completion of resin polymerization. Now, here you see the temperature versus volume resistivity curves of different polymer coating. This is a best example of electrical resistivity versus the, uh, the temperature curves. Now, when we talk about the effect of contaminants, which play a very vital role on surface resistivity, it, it gives a good idea that how these uh, polymers can be used for the uh, uh, variety of uh, products like moisture contaminants. They have a more pronounced effect on surface resistivity compared to the volume resistivity. The contamination uh, like fingerprint then can cause the significant reduction in the surface resistivity while volume resistivity may take longer to change in humid or uh, contaminating uh, environments. Like here you see the polyethylene, polyestyrene, polymethyl methacrylate, silica glass, all these things and this gives the surface resistivity at 50% humidity and 96% humidity. You can see the effect of the contaminants over the surface resistivity. Then we talk about the effect of humidity on surface resistivity. The effect of humidity on surface uh, resistivity, this can vary depending on the type of hardener used in the epoxies like uh, aromatic amine cured epoxies, they display uh, higher stability at higher relative humidity levels compared to the anhydride or aliphatic amine cured type. Now let us talk about the electrical properties, it has been observed that the uh, anhydride cure sample resistivity levied uh, uh, of uh, um, to about say 5 into 10 to the power 12 ohms per square, a value that is, is still considered adequate to for most electrical applications. Now, this resistivities can recover 
after removal from a humid environment with aromatic amine cured epoxies. This demonstrates the fastest recovery rate. Let us talk about the conductance and uh, conductive polymers. The conductance and conductivity, the, the reciprocal of resistance is called uh, the conductance. This is expressed in units of ohms uh, inverse and the reciprocal resistivity is uh, the specific conductance expressed in units of ohms inverse, centimeter inverse uh, or um, milli ohms per centimeter and molecularly conductive polymers. They are also known as uh, intrinsically conductive uh, polymers uh, or ICP or uh, conjugated polymers. They are the class of polymers that exhibits electrical conductivity due to their unique molecular structure. So, unlike traditional polymers uh, which are typically insulators, molecularly conductive polymers possesses uh, delocalized pi electron system along uh, their polymer chain allowing for the efficient movement of charge carriers, electrons or holes. Now, if we talk uh, continue to the talk about the molecularly conductive polymers, some organic materials, they have been syn uh, uh, synthesized or formulated to exhibit uh, the semiconductive or conductive uh, properties uh, contrary to the insulating nature. Inherently, conductive polymer can be created by doping a linear conjugated polymer with an uh, electron donor or acceptor such as uh, polyacetylene, polypyrrole, polyphenylene sulphide, uh, polyparaphenylene, uh, polythiophene and polyaniline. So, all these are represented over here in their structural form. Now, these polymers have the low conductivity in their undoped state uh, ranging from semiconductor to insulators and doping is achieved by exposing the thin film or powder of uh, polymers to electron donating or electron accepting dopant. So, the conductivity of uh, polymer is primarily depend by the type and amount of dopant resulting in a range from semiconductor behavior to true metallic conductivity. Let us take example of uh, polypyrophenylene para, uh, doped with iodine nets as a semiconductor while doping with an arsenic uh, pentafluoride converts it into the metallic range. Inherently, the conductive polymers are still in research phase and yet uh, in, in not, not yet commercially available. Now, handling and shaping of these materials can be challenging and they are insoluble in most organic and aqueous solutions. So, the long term stali stability is uh, a concern as many of these polymers are susceptible to oxidation. Now, there are various features uh, attributed to the molecularly conducting polymers. One is the processability. The molecularly conductive uh, polymers are typically soluble in common organic solvents, uh, allowing for easy processing and fabrication into various forms, including film, fiber, coating. Then pi conjugation. The molecularly conductive polymers have been have conjugated backbone structure consisting in alter uh, consisting of alternating single and multiple bonds and these pi conjugation facilities uh, are delocalized uh, de delocalization of pi electrons uh, along the polymer chain and leading to the enhanced electrical conductivity the doping the molecularly conductive polymers can undergo a process called doping where they are chemically modified with introducing dopant molecule. The doping introduces the, the charge carriers either electron or holes into the polymer further enhancing its electrical conductivity. This doping can be reversible or irreversible depending on that specific polymer and dopant used. The variable conductivity, the electrical conductivity of a molecularly conductive polymer can vary over a wide range from insulating to semiconducting to metallic depending on the factors such as polymer structure, doping level, processing conditions. Optical and electronic properties, the molecularly uh, conductive polymer often exhibits uh, 
interesting optical and electronic properties such, such as uh, fluorescence, uh, electroluminance uh, and uh, photoconductivity. These properties make them useful in applications such as organic light emitting diode, uh, OLEDs and uh, photovoltaic devices. Environmental stability. The stability of molecularly conductive polymers, this can vary depending on the, the chemical structure and its specific dopant use. Some polymers may exhibit sensitivity uh, to moisture, oxygen or uh, ultraviolet uh, radiation which can affect their long term performance and durability. The applications, the molecularly conductive polymer have found application in a wide range of fields including organic electronics, sensors, energy storage devices, um, electrochromic uh, displays, actuators. Examples of molecularly conductive polymers include polyaniline, polythiophene, uh, polypyrols. Ongoing research and development efforts continue to explore new and new molecularly conductive polymers and enhance their properties uh, for various technological applications. Let us talk about the metal filled uh, polymers. The coating may be formulated with metals or other conductive fillers to render them uh, electrically semiconducting or conducting. Now, conductive coating which is, which is are useful in application with the required ohmic contact for circuits and uh, bridging of uh, conductors, radio frequency, interferences and dissipation of uh, electrostatic charges. Silver, gold, copper, carbon blacks, they are the most commonly used fillers and epoxies, uh, polyurethanes, silicons, uh, vinyls, uh, acrylics and uh, are, they are the typical resin binders. Standard compositions are available or may be formulated in all viscosities ranging from thick um, pastas to, to, to sprayable liquids. These coatings can be formulated with conductive fillers such as silver, gold, copper, carbon black or impart the electrical conductivity or semiconducting properties. And uh, uh, these are very beneficial uh, for applications required the ohmic contact, circuit bridging, radio frequency interferences, shielding, electrostatic charge dissipation. Uh, there are certain noble metals like gold, platinum, they require uh, thorough cleaning to remove the high resistance surface oxide layer while metal oxides may gradually form, form over time and leading to the decreased conductivity. The degree of cure of the resin binder also influences the conductivity baking type formulation and generally providing better conductivity than air drying variators varieties. For high conductance, silver or gold fillers are typically used and with optimal formulation and cure conductivity values of approximately 103 um, milli ohms uh, centimeter per centimeter can be achieved. Now, in this particular table, we have enlisted the conductivity data of uh, uh, various filled epoxies uh, like silver filled epoxy cured. The initial value is 3000 and after say 40 days humidity cycling 1250 and after 50 hours 20 percent salt split becomes 1400. Similarly, silver filled epoxy air dried for 36 hours and gold filled epoxy cured for 6 hours at 50 degrees Celsius the various values has been given. Now, let us talk about the comparison of uh, the conductive fillers, uh, advantages and disadvantages. Now, if we use the silver uh, uh, filler that is electrical conductor, the advantage is very high conductivity, but a disadvantage is that the high cost silver migration can occur under the certain conditions and tarnishes and corrodes. Then the gold um, or electrical conductors, very high conductivity and very inert and stable. Just which, which possesses the high cost than silver subject to the government control and audit. The copper and electrical, which is the electrical conductor, this is the high conductivity, low cost. This uh, requires the extra steps for cleaning and removing of oxides. Conductivity decreases with the age. Aluminium, this is the high uh, conductivity, low cost. Uh, this can oxide and shielding decreases with the rising frequency. Then steel, this is a low cost, but 
disadvantage is that the low conductivity, the graphite and the carbon black, low cost and a very good EMI shield. But though low conductivity, shielding decreases with the rising frequency, this must be a large volume percentage. Let us talk about the capacitance. Now, consider a parallel plate capacitor with the charge on one plate designated as uh, uh, plus theta, uh, theta to change charge on the other plate with minus theta per centimeter square. If the space between the plates consists of a vacuum, the electrical field E within the capacitor is given by Ev is equal to 4 pi theta and capacitance by the definition is the total charge divided by the potential difference between the plates. So, so, Cv is equal to Q over V and that is small theta A over 4 pi D small theta and which is equal to A over 4 pi D where Q is the total uh, charge, See, the A is the area of the plates, D is the distance between the plates. V is the, the potential uh, potential difference between the plates and Cv is the capacitance in farad. Now, this capacitance of effect uh, effects from the plastic substrates, adhesives or coating, they are crucial for reliable functioning of high frequency linear high speed digital circuits. The high uh, capacitance can cause delay in switching times and uh, changes in the component values. The coupling capacitance between the circuit play paths and integrated circuits on multi-layer boards limits the presents, uh, pre uh, present computer operations. This reduces the, the computing speed between the integrated circuits and increases the power consumption. The reduction in the parasitic uh, capacitance can be achieved through the proper material selection and uh, circuit geometry design. Now, this uh, capacitance C is directly proportional to the dielectric constant K uh, of insulator and the area of conductor and inversely proportional to the distance between the conductors. So, C is equal to K A over D. The low capacitance can be achieved by minimizing the area using insulators with a low dielectric constant K and increasing the distance between the conductors. The trend towards the uh, towards uh, micro miniaturization and use of thin conductor lines and insulation layers of 5 mils or less uh, this requires the insulating material with a very low dielectric constant while maintaining the necessary engineering and manufacturing properties. The dielectric constants for high frequency linear circuit such as those used in the radar assemblies the dielectric constant of insulator again becomes uh, important. Especially, uh, it may vary with the uh, with the change in frequency. Now, this particular graph shows the variation of the dielectric constant as a function of uh, uh, frequency of some commonly used uh, polymers like phenolic, epoxies, silicons, all these things. Now, if uh, the spaces between the plate of the parallel plate capacitor is filled with uh, dielectric material, the capacitance will be increased by a factor which is constant for a particular material and the constant K is referred as a dielectric constant or permittivity and represented by this particular equation that is Cm is equal to Kcv or K is equal to Cm over Cv where Cm is the capacitance of dielectric material and Cv is the capacitance of the vacuum. The dielectric constant of the material may therefore be defined as uh, the ratio of the parallel electrical capacitance with the material between the plates to the capacitance with the vacuum separate the plates. Now, since uh, the dielectric material affects the force uh, with which the two oppositely charged plates attract each other, it may also be defined as the relative effect of the medium on the force of attraction and as per the Coulomb's equation F is equal to Q Q dash over K D square where F is the force of attraction between the two plates, Q is the charge, Q dash is the charge of the second plate, K is the dielectric constant and D, D is the distance between the plate, plates. The force of attraction between the plate is, uh, plates is attenuated by the high dielectric constant of the material between them. The dielectric constant of a vacuum uh, is uh, one and the practical purpose is the dielectric constant of air is also considered as one. 
So, various standards they provide the details of uh, the sample preparation, measuring methods, the equipment for uh, the measuring dielectric constant and the gases generally have dielectric constant slightly greater than 1 while organic compounds this especially highly polar type this can have the value up to 100. Now, these dielectric constants they are influenced by the electronic polarizability of the material and the presence of polar group with the permanent dipole moment. Now, polar polymers tend to absorb more water from the atmosphere which negatively affect their electrical properties. And the non-polar types such as uh, uh, polyethylene, polystyrene, fluorocarbon generally have the better electrical properties. More polar structure like uh, uh, polymethyl methacrylate, polyamides, polyvinyl chloride tend to have the inferior electrical properties compared to the non-polar system. Now, sometimes if we talk about the coating with the low dielectric constant and the low dissipation factor that in maintain these values across a wide range of temperature and humidity which are preferred as electrical insulating materials. Coating with the high dielectric constant and a low dissipation factor are also useful for the capacitors um, as uh, they can store large amount of electrical energy and the dielectric constant of coating this can be influenced by the variation in, um, in its composition such as uh, the addition of uh, glass or ceramic fillers or blending resins with the different dielectric constants. Now, this is the example of a typical curve for blending of uh, polysulfide with the epoxy. Let us talk about the dissipation factor and the power factor. Now, dissipation factor D uh, is the ratio of the resistivity losses lo that is sometimes referred as a loss uh, com uh, resistive component of uh, current I to the capacitive component uh, capacitive component of uh, current I and the equal to the tangent of the dielectric loss and this can be represented as D is equal to IR over IC or tan uh, theta. Now, the power factor is the ratio um, of a power dissipated to the current and is a measure of dielectric loss in the insulation acting as a capacitor. It is related to the dissipation factor by this particular equation D is equal to Pf over square root of 1 plus Pf square. Now, the dielectric material will have the low values of a dissipation factor uh, which uh, are essentially equivalent to the power factor. And uh, military specifications such as MIL 116923 requires the dissipation values not greater than 0 0.02 at 1000 hertz and 25 degrees Celsius. So, the loss factor determined by the product of the power factor and dielectric constant measures the signal uh, absorption and it is denoted by K10 or KD that is loss factor is equal to the almost equal to the what? So, loss almost equal to the K10 without KD. Now, the variation of dielectric constant and dissipation factor with the temperature at constant frequency both the dielectric constant and the dissipation factor for insulating coating will in general increase with increasing temperature. Now, because coating formulations they are not homogeneous and because they contain the constituents which become volatile or change on heating, the electrical values may be quite erratic and no simple linear relationship with the temperature exists. Now, here you see that the variation of dielectric constant with the temperature, degree of cure and the frequency for an epoxy coating cured with anhydride castor oil adduct. Similarly, here you, you can observe, you can have a look about the variation of dissipation factor with the temperature, degree of cure and the frequency of for an epoxy coating cured with anhydride castor oil adduct. The sample temperature, this was allowed to stabilize for about 25 minutes prior to the measurement of the electrical properties at each temperature. Therefore, the part of the change uh, attributed to the temperature may be mask by uh, further curing of uh, the polymer at each uh, temperature. Now, the variation of uh, dielectric constant and a dissipation factor with the cure, the rate of, of the change in the dielectric constant and the dissipation factor with the increasing temperature may be used as an indication of uh, the degree of cure of the polymer. Electrical properties uh, of a fully cured polymer 
change only slowly with the increasing temperature in comparison with the rapid change in partially cured polymers and this uh, is apparently given in the figure 1 and 2. Now at room temperature with the, uh, the electrical properties in question, uh, so the, if we talk about the electrical properties of two samples uh, which are, are almost identical and uh, therefore at this temperature one cannot differentiate between the two cure conditions. Further data on the change of dielectric constant and dissipation factor with the degree of uh, cure they are given in this uh, particular table. Here you see that uh, different samples and after cure of 16 hour and at 74 degrees Celsius similarly after post cure and after additional cost cure it has been given um, for the various dielectric constants. Now here you see the different dissipation factors um, say after cure of say 16 hours at 74 degree all the conditions are similar and you can see the change with respect to the frequency how it goes down. Now the optimum curing time and temperature obtained from a plot of the dielectric constant or dissipation factor versus time at constant temperature or even more apparent for the epoxy system which is shown that is the establishment of the epoxy cure schedule from uh, dissipation factor data and this is um, from the dielectric constant data you can see the difference. Now initial values immediately after mixing of the two component uh, system upon activating the one component coating they are high but they decrease as the polymerization and hardening progresses. Ultimately at some optimum time these values will level off uh, and stabilize. It can be seen that uh, the cure of these epoxy resin is essentially completed in 3.5 hours at 120 degrees Celsius but it requires 12 hours at 66 degrees Celsius to achieve the some, uh, same degree of uh, cure. Other investigators they have also shown the same type of a thing and the degree of hardening and the cross linking of an epoxy system may be followed by the dielectric measurement over a frequency range of uh, 30 to 1010 hertz. Let us talk about uh, the dielectric strength and breakdown voltage. This dielectric strength and breakdown voltage are important electrical properties that relate to the ability of a material to withstand electrical stress without experiencing electrical breakdown. The dielectric strength uh, is the maximum electric field strength that a material can withstand before electrical breakdown occurs. It is a measure of insulation capabilities of material and typically expressed in a unit of volts per unit thickness and dielectric strength indicates the maximum voltage that can be applied across the material without causing electrical breakdown and it is a very critical properties in application where electrical insulation is required. Let us talk about the breakdown voltage. This is referred as a breakdown field and uh, breakdown strength is the voltage at which the electrical breakdown occurs in a material. It represents the point at which the insulating properties of the material fail and the electrical current starts to flow. The breakdown voltage is typically measured by gradually increasing the applied voltage until breakdown occurs. It is expressed in volts or kilovolts. The arc resistance. The arc resistance is an electrical property that measures the material's ability to withstand the formation and propagation of an electric arc without experiencing the degradation or failure. It is an important consideration for materials used in application where electrical arcing can occur such as uh, um, the electrical switches, circuit breakers, uh, other high voltage equipments and the arc resistance of material is determined by its ability to resist the effects of electrical arcing including the heat generation, thermal stress and the formation of conductive path. Higher arc resistance indicates the greater ability of the material to withstand the damping effect. Now these arc resistances are typically measured using the standardized test method given in ASTM or IEC. In these tests, the high voltage electrical arc is generated between the two electrodes and material being tested 
be placed in the path of the arc and the resistance of the material to the arc is uh, evaluated that is based um, on various factors such as appearance of surface damage, tracking, carbonization and ability to maintain the electrical insulation properties. Then the material composition, the chemical composition of the structure of the material can affect the arc resistance and polymer with the high carbon content. For example, it may exhibit the lower arc resistance due to their susceptibility to carbonization during the arcing. Then the filler additives, the, the inclusion of filler and additive in the material, this can improve the arc resistance. Filler like glass fiber, flame retardant additives, this can enhance the material's ability to dissipate uh, heat and resist arcing. The material thickness, the thicker the material generally have higher arc resistance as they provide more insulation and distance for arc propagation. Surface condition, the surface condition of the material including smoothness and cleanliness, this can impact the uh, arc resistance. The temperature and humidity, the environmental conditions such as temperature and humidity can influence the arc resistance of a material. Elevated temperature and um, high humidity level can decrease the arc resistance by promoting the breakdown of the insulating properties of the material. So, dear friends, in this particular segment, we discussed the, the various aspects related to these polymers and for your convenience, we have enlisted uh, several references which you can utilize uh, as per your need. Thank you very much.